that was Sunday, um, and Uruguay just won the, um, the Copa America, and people just went out to celebrate. And there is this place called La Grande Uruguaya, and all Uruguayans go there every day. And it was spontaneous. They just got there, more and more people, there was a way, and suddenly police came and with some news about, um, some complaints about riot going on, and it turned violent. They do the typical editing, so it was like 500 words. So the story went down to 350 words. Um, and after that, I was hoping to do a follow-up on that, but then we couldn't do it. The question after that, one week after that, I says, is this value for the mainstream media? There's a void. And if here in New York City, especially, there's what, 72 different languages or something? I don't know. I don't know how many communities. But there's just no way the three publications in the city can adequately cover, or the broadcast outlets can adequately cover those communities. Basically, as immigrants, some of the times we want to reminisce. And so what we do is to feed that hunger the feeling of hearing from home. And we give that to our readers. To the others, we educate them. We educate them on issues that may not necessarily appear in the media here. Well, certainly from, from my perspective and from government's perspective, um, they, c they really are our partners and, and need to be our partners in helping disseminate really critical information to our communities. Um, in New York City, 1.8 million um, New Yorkers are limited English proficient, uh, and we are trying to communicate very important messages to them, and so we need the ethnic press to help us. The reason number one is the language. The immigrant communities, I think the major problems, the major challenge they confront with is the language barrier. So these uh, ethnic newspapers tell them what's going on in their own language, the language they could easily read. If I talk about myself and not only Pakistani American community, but also the issues uh, surrounding and related to the communities, when even it comes to the presidential election, it comes to the education in the city, it comes to the immigration reform. I don't really see how a city like New York, um, and there are others in the country of course, but um, can manage and, and be fair to its constituents and residents without a strong uh, ethnic and community press. I mean, even in New York City, you can go from one street to the next and be in a completely different neighborhood. Not necessarily ethnic, but just a different community. You know, when it comes to community uh, um, uh, projects and uh, community organizing, and I think that a part of what we do is community organizing, um, which goes beyond where I think mainstream media um, has gone in the past. The New York Times is never going to talk about what's happening on your block, and uh, there's a great likelihood that what's happening on your block is more important to you than anything that's happening anywhere else. For instance, like the Seward Park urban renewal area, south of Delancey, between Delancey and Grand, um, there's not really any uh, citywide coverage on that. I mean, it's scant, uh, and it's such a huge issue in our neighborhood. I mean, if they actually develop that land, it could make, it could change the entire neighborhood. Despite the clear need for these ethnic and community-based publications, there remain many challenges to overcome, journalistically, technologically, and with regard to business strategy. We have to be, um, to acknowledge something. So most of these people that work on these publications are immigrants, and instead of using the standard for the U.S. American journalism, they bring the standards from their countries. Sometimes those standards are not the same than the, than the U.S. journalism. So that's the other step, to, to bring that information to these standards. We follow the rules of journalism. 
um, you know, we get bombarded with all kinds of cheese man gossip and, you know, we just can't go tossing it up on the site. It has to go through some vetting, some fact checking. And I think understanding um, how important that is through training um, could be helpful to all of us. I picked up lots of skills in the 20 years that I was in television news, uh, and I was surprised how much I didn't know, uh, you know, how, how many skills relevant to, um, you know, running a hyperlocal site that I really lacked. You know, sometimes we are the writer, the editor, the, you know, video editor, that we're shooting everything. So that's been... Um, and I suspect I can speak f pretty much for most of us who are doing this. Um, that's, a, that's a big challenge for us. The question of, sustain of financial sustainability is what everybody's trying to figure out right now, and we're definitely uh, trying to figure it out as well. The CUNY Graduate School of Journalism is actively aiding these ethnic and community-based publications by offering training in both traditional journalistic principles and cutting-edge digital tools that will help them engage their growing audience on the web. And today we have so many tools that they can use and they don't even need to invest money on that. Some, most of them, they have iPhones they have um, smartphones, and you can do the videos with that. So if they learn how to apply that to an everyday covering, so those publications online or print are gonna be richer. Like how to edit video, it's kind of a, a rocket science for me. So then I come here, I had, uh, I think, in the beginning, I had one day training, then I came back for a week long training. And now I can edit my videos and uh, it's like one, two, three for me. And I would say that the, the boot camp gave us um, some very practical, like actual social media tools that we started using right away um, when we were reporting. So we could do kind of live posting. Um, and people already immediately responded to that too and were very impressed, but it made it feel even more current so we could go to an event and say, here's where we are right now. Students at the school are also undertaking a major investigative project each year on behalf of a selected publication under the tutelage of veteran investigative journalist Tom Robbins. Additionally, the J School is now the proud publisher of Voices of NY a website that curates the best stories each day from over 80 ethnic and community publications, translating them when necessary into English from more than 10 languages with the help of our diverse student body. Hi, my name is Kamina Shrestha and I translate Nepali. My name is Vincent Trevet and I translate Japanese to English. My name is Natalia Osipova and I translate Russian. My name is Lisa Mahapatra and I translate Hindi. My name is Meng Ling and I translate from Chinese. My name is Anais, and I translate Spanish. Hi, my name is Raider Rafai, and I translate into Arabic. My name is Kimi Banyasiranand, and I translate Spanish and Portuguese. See, if you have an Egyptian student coming here, he connects with the community here, he could, be a, he could be a correspondent. We don't have correspondents anymore. And that could be a way to be a correspondent, in a way. And second, he can strain that community here and say, when he goes back over there, he knows that that community is here, so he can connect this community to his country and have that voice from that community here over there. So I think Voices is a kind of bridge between us and mainstream media, a bridge between us and mainstream America. Voices of NY offers stories and perspective, like our multimedia package about the Uruguayan soccer incident that would otherwise be ignored. It raises visibility of this media sector while serving as a vital bridge between mainstream media and underserved communities. Voices of NY gives such great breadth in that area. You know, as much as we like to read our community newspapers, this is another avenue to realize what's happening in our communities. And so for the immigrant communities, that's our newspaper to look at. The CUNY Graduate School of Journalism a hub of research, training, and professional support for the city's vital community and ethnic media.